Hey guys, and welcome to my sixth video in my series entitled Project Nostalgia. In this video, I'm again just going to be doing a bit of everything, which is why I decided to change the title and relate it to something that's in the video. Um, I'm kind of sick. I'm actually really sick right now. So if I sound like a chain smoker, that's why. But I hope you guys enjoy it, and here we go. How could I forget about this spot? It was like the source of my free-to-play prayer training. A friend of mine, his name is Laptard now. He changed his name like every one month, but uh, he reminded me, and yes, I did used to do this all the time, I'm sure it goes for a lot of people as well, there, so there's like 14 bone spawns here, and uh, it actually, um, this used to keep me occupied while I was PKing, I would sometimes just sit here pray and train prayer while uh, waiting for someone to either hop worlds here or come here with a team or whatever. Because it wasn't multi, so I would usually have my team too. So, hot spot for PKing and for prayer training. There's one more thing I forgot to mention here at the Chaos Altar. Is these, uh, these fiery explosions that come out of the lava. They used to freak me out. Like, I used to think they would just kill you in one hit. And I think the reason I thought that was because a friend of mine told me that uh, one hit him one time and he died. So I would always avoid them, and I think the first time I got hit by one, I got hit like an 8 or something, 8 in the old HP system, which was still a lot, but I could be lying, it might not have been an 8, but still, these things, pretty horrifying. So I used to think monks were so funny, and they were so good to train on, because you could sit here and kill them, and then like walk away, if they're like killing you, you walk away, and then talk to them. And all of a sudden, we're best friends again, despite the fact that I just tried to kill him. And he wants to heal me. Can you heal me? I'm injured. Okay. <laughs> so helpful, and he never needed food. And then there was this one over here, brother something, and he would heal you, like you couldn't attack him, but he would heal you. I think he used to heal you more than the other ones, I'm not sure. So I remember when brass necklaces used to show up like everywhere, and now you hardly see them. But this one brass necklace in particular, um, my first time into Edgeville Dungeon, or one of my first trips into here, I saw that brass necklace, and I made it a goal of mine to eventually reach that spot. And I actually didn't know that it was connected to the Hill Giants. I hadn't even been to the Hill Giants spot yet. But, um, yeah, I eventually made an adventure through this tunnel, through this dungeon, this entire dungeon. And this was a proud moment in my RuneScape history. Oh yeah. This is just a real quick story. So when I was first introduced to RuneScape, I was told by my friend to go into World 3. So I went into World 3, did all my stuff or whatever. But um, after that, I always used World 3. And I used World 3 because I thought that all the other worlds were different. Like I thought there were different areas in other worlds for all of the hundreds of other worlds that were, or not hundreds, but there were actually not that many worlds back then and they were separated differently, like into little squares um, by area of where you lived. So for those who don't know, thieving was my first 99. And the reason I started training thieving, or really started training thieving, was because this black scimitar used to be behind a door that you could only pick with like level 53 thieving or something like that so I started training thieving and when I could finally open that door I used to take this black scimitar hop worlds take another black scimitar and I'd do that forever and then I'd go to Varric West Bank and sell them for 10k each massive money maker not really but it was one of my methods before the grand exchange the general store used to be such a fun spot to come look at items and prices for stuff, buy stuff overpriced, sell stuff underpriced, but when you used to trade the general store guy, he would show you, it would have like items from everyone that sold to it, and it would, there would always be overpriced, eventually I came to realize that, but it would be fun to watch like what items people would sell, some items you can get really cheap, especially if they were like in mass and the general store was selling them for like a cheap price or whatever and you could check like how much your items were worth even though they weren't really it wasn't really an accurate 
description of their price, because you could sell them to people for much more, but that was the general store. It was a fun place. Alright, I gotta make this quick, because I've been hopping worlds for like 30 minutes now, and there's always someone here, so I basically just waited for this bot to fill up his inventory. And anyway, so, one of Zamorax, um, obviously if you take it, all of these guys start attacking you, and I found that out the hard way. I didn't die from it, um, but a guy told me, hey, go take that wine off the table. Being the little kid that I was, I went and did it, and everyone started attacking me. But, um, eventually... Oh, they don't attack you anymore. Oh, yeah, they do, just kidding. But, um, yeah, eventually I started coming here and just, just, uh, sat there and waited for people to try to take it without telegrab. And I wouldn't tell them to take it. They would take it of their own will, and I'd wait for them to die. And I'd do my whole door thing like a little douchebag kid I was. But, um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of you did that as well. Don't give me that. I didn't do that look. <laughs> In Fazbatis, ye had offered your help gratis. Built it were his name, sailing were his game, but he lacked the apparatus.